Hi, this is Alma Lalana and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 190 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of trying undergrade first, even in cases where the retrograde approach is likely to eventually be needed. The patient had previous radiation therapy of the chest for cancer and presented with um, dyspnea. She was found to have a cardiomyopathy and coronary angiography demonstrated an osteal occlusion of the left anterior descending artery with heavy calcification. Different views demonstrate some feeling in the LAD territory via ipsilateral collaterals. There is mild to moderate disease into the circumflex. And there was also a significant osteal lesion of the right coronary artery with dampening of the pressure of board engagement and with septal collaterals from the right filling the LAD. So what to do next? We do have a patient who has two-vessel coronary artery disease. The patient was evaluated uh, by cardiothoracic surgery, but because of the previous cancer history, the previous chest radiation therapy, she was not deemed to be a good surgical candidate and was referred for PCI. She did have two target vessels, the right coronary artery and the LADCTO. The LADCTO has a relatively ambiguous proximal cap. There may be something a small numb, a small entry into the CTO, into the left main, but this was not clear. The length is approximately 30 millimeters. The distal vessel was heavily calcified, and it was filling mainly via septal collaterals from the right coronary artery. So our plan here was to first perform right heart catheterization to determine the need for hemodynamic support, given two-vessel disease with reduced ejection fraction and then proceed with PCI of the right coronary artery first, and then attempt a PCI of the LADCTO. The plan was to first try with undergrade wiring, seeing if that nub, that entry point, was truly leading into the LAD. If that didn't work, go with uh, retrograde crossing through the right coronary artery, or alternatively, do undergrade dissection and re-entry. The right high catheterization showed normal filling pressures, and as a result, we proceeded with PCI without hemodynamic support. There was significant dampening of the pressure upon engagement of the right coronary artery. That is why we downsized it to a 6 French from a 7 French JR4 guide catheter, inserted the guide wire into the coronary artery, and then performed the PCI with the guide being disengaged from the ostium of the right coronary artery. We predilated with the Scorflex balloon because we did have a lot of uh, watermelon seeding with standard non-compliant balloon. The score flex uh, helps stabilize uh, the position of the balloon and also helps dilate the ostium that was heavily calcified in this particular patient. And indeed, we did have a good balloon expansion. We then placed a 3.5 by 30 millimeter resolute frontier stand all the way to the ostium to perform this best. Uh, using the independent hand technique can be very useful in which the left hand moves the guide and the right hand delivers the balloons or the stents. The stent was placed. Uh, there was still some residual disease distally. We performed IVUS. We decided to treat it, so we placed an additional 3.0 by 15 millimeter stent. That provided a nice result in the right coronary artery. So now we moved our efforts into recanalizing the LAD CTO. This is the dual injection, injecting first from the right coronary artery and then from the left main. And again, in the caudal views, we see that there may be an entry point into the CTO. There is indeed heavy calcification in the course of the vessel. There was some ambiguity of the proximal cap. And how can we approach this? Quite often in the past, we used to go with a primary retrograde approach. However, the retrograde approach does have an increased risk compared with undergrade crossing. Therefore, if undergrade techniques can be used, that can be advantageous. In this particular case, we did multiple projections and we saw what appeared to be as the entry into the CTO. We did not do a CTA, but we did perform intravascular ultrasound that seemed to support the notion that the entry to the LAD CTO was at the area of the nub. And here, move the cap techniques were not an option because we have a large circumflex branch, so we do not want to cause a dissection that could result in compromise of the flow to the circumflex. 
in these lesions that are heavily calcific, we don't want to go with uh, uh, very penetrating guide wires initially. So we tried first with uh, a filter XTA guide wire, but this kept on prolapsing towards the circumflex. So we changed into a Pilot 200 that seemed to enter into the nub. Then we are advanced the Corsair, and then we were able to advance the Pilot 200 in what appeared to be the course of the vessel based on the wall calcification. This is the contralateral injection, and indeed it looks like with a true lumen. One way to confirm is to actually advance the guide wire doing the contralateral injection to determine whether the wire is moving indeed in the course of the vessel, which it was getting into the septal branch. We use the same Scorflex balloon to predilate the LED, and despite the heavy calcification, there was good expansion. I was also saw that most of the calcium was deep. And after predilatation, we actually got good flow into the LED that appeared to be a good sized vessel. However, there was some disease or possible dissection next to the origin of the circumflex. Always when we performed a PCI of um, proximal allostia LED CTOs, we want to make sure if we come retrograde, which we did not in this case, that there is no compromise of the circumflex by going extra plaque and creating a dissection plane. Here, although we went undergrade, there seems to be some disease into the circumflex, which uh, we did not want to uh, let untreated. So we decided to stand with the two stand technique using the DK crust technique. There are 17 steps that are described in detail in the relevant video. Uh, we did first place the stand into the circumflex to 75 by 8 because we did not want to double jail this um, uh, distal circumflex. That stand was placed with multiple injections and provided a nice result. The stand was crushed, then uh, we performed uh, proximal optimization and then advanced, uh, rewired the circumflex, advanced balloon in the LED in the circumflex and did the first kissing balloon inflation. We then delivered with difficulty using the side branch anchor, a 35 by 38 millimeter resolute frontier stand, all the way from the left main ostium to the mid LED. We did confirm that it was covering the CTO in a cranial projection. It was deployed and then we performed once again proximal optimization with a 4.5 by 8 millimeter balloon to ensure that we did not wire under the stand struts. And then we did advance a guide wire into the circumflex. We had difficulty delivering a balloon to the circumflex, but we then used the side branch anchor inflating a balloon into the LED. And by doing that, we were able to easily advance a balloon into the circumflex. We did the second kissing balloon inflation, and this was the final result. That was excellent as confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that angiography quite often can help resolve proximal cap ambiguity, even though here it appeared that the LAD might have been a ambiguous uh, entry into the vessel by doing various projections, especially the caudal projections, and by using intravascular ultrasound. We found an entry point into the CTO that was crossed successfully with a polymer jacketed wire. And when there is ambiguity, it's probably best to avoid the highly penetrating wires like the Confianza, the Hornet, and the Warrior, and instead to use uh, polymer jacketed wires that are less likely to perforate. Finally, we did do a two stand technique to cover the left main bifurcation, and we had delivery, uh, difficulty delivering balloons after um, the second and the first rewiring, and this was resolved by using the side branch anchoring technique. Thank you.